Now we're ready to code the Browse button. What we're going to do is in Debt 2.0 and above, they've added some new controls to make coding a little bit easier, and these are the dialog controls. What we're going to be adding is an open file dialog. What the open file dialog does is it opens the window that you typically see when you click a browse or an open file. So what we're going to do is I'm going to change the name to something a little more standard, and then I'm going to blank out, a change, or rather change a few properties. The file name property is the value di that displays in the file name when you open the box. I don't want anything to display, so I'm going to blank that out. The next thing is the filter. This is what shows in the drop-down. If I have nothing there, nothing will show up. So in order to figure out what shows up in the drop-down, the first parameter is what's the text. Then the second parameter is the extension. So each parameter is separated by a pipe. So what I'm just going to do is all files. Then finally I'm going to change the initial directory. This is the directory where to start. If I don't have anything in there, it's going to default to the directory in which the application resides. So then finally, after adding this control on here, I'm going to add the action. The show dialog method of the uh, control shows the actual dialog box. There is an action that's associated with the open file dialog called file OK. So what happens is when a user selects a file, this is the event that gets triggered. What I want to happen is if the user selects the file, I want to populate that text box. So how I tap populate it is I take the file name property from the open file dialog, put that value into the text box that I call txt file. And here is a demonstration of that application. begin coding for the upload, we need to import two libraries. The first library we need to import is the system I.O. library because we are going to be doing some file actions to it. The second one that we're going to import is the system.net library. This contains the classes that we need for the file upload. Now we're ready to begin the actual coding. We're going to be coding for the upload event, the upload click event. The first thing that we're going to be doing is we are going to actually define a file info class and this is what sets up the information for the file that we'll, we will be uploading. We will be using this as a reference for various things. So we are going to make an instance of the file info class as, which is part of the system I.O. library and the information that we're going to populate it with is the file that was selected by the user which is in the txt file dot text file. The next thing that the class uses is a URI. In this string we're going to build the actual URI. We're going to reference as the FTP because we're going to be using the FTP protocol. Then we're going to enter the server information that was entered by the user. Then we're just going to enter the file name and by getting the name property from the file info. This will strip out all of the extraneous information such as the drive as well as the directory so it's just going to get the actual name. Finally, we're going to make an instance of the FTP web request class, which is part of SystemNet. We're going to be using this reference because we have to do some communication with the server by specifying the URI as well as some additional information about our upload. Now we're going to actually get ready to actually do some building. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to first create the request from the URI. We're also going to set up the con connection credentials. Uh, what we're going to do is we have to cast it as an FTP web request. So we're now going to create the actual request by passing the URI that we just built. Now in the next few steps we're going to be specifying a couple other things of the FTP. First we're going to specify what method we're going to be doing. Are we going to be doing an upload or we're going to be doing a download? And then the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to specify how we want to upload the data, whether we want to do a binary update upload or a text upload. 
it's best to do a use binary of true, which is the use binary property, because that'll, even if it is a text file, it will still upload it properly. This is to cover all the bases. The method property indicates what you're going to be doing. Are you going to be uploading or are you going to be downloading? In this case, we want upload file because we are going to be uploading. Now as part of the process, you have to tell the FTP server how big the file is going to be that you're going to be uploading. So we're going to set the content length property to equal the length of the file, which is the length property of the file info. open a stream to be able to connect to the FTP server. This is the stream that we're going to be using to, be, to connect to the FTP server. What we also want to do is we want to add a little bit of extra logic to make the, the conversation between our computer and the FTP server a little more efficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to communicate in buffers. The next few lines that are being demonstrated to you right now is setting up an actual buffer length. We're going to be communicating in 2K buffers, which is 2048 bytes. So this is what we're doing at this point. We're opening the file right now, the file stream FS, to be able to open to read. What basically we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading the file two kilobytes at a time, and we're going to be communicating that information to the stream that's going to be used between us and the FTP server. The instance of the stream class is we reference to FTP.getRequest. That is going to be our communication portal, so to speak. I don't want to use portal, but for lack of a better term. Then after we open the portal, or we open the little line of communication, now we're going to read the file that's going to be uploaded to the server, and we're going to upload that file to the instance of the stream class at STRM. Notice, this, notice that this conversation is going on in a try-catch loop. You typically want to do that with the file processing in particular, because we are doing a lot of file transactions. We want to put that in the try-catch loop. So when an error occurs, we don't have a hardcore crash. What we can do is we can handle it in a different way in the catch. some additional code for the user experience. And that is the first thing we're going to add some code display when an error occurs. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the message box. We're just going to display a little message box that appears to indicate what happened. So it's a little bit more customized. So in this demonstration we're going to display the message property of, e, of the exception class because instead of all the stack trace and whatnot so we're just going to say, we get to the bottom line, here's what happened. We're also going to make it a little more user friendly by displaying only the OK button as well as an icon that just says error. The typical red X as you typically see or you see the little red circle with a white X into it. We're also going to do a similar logic by making another message box to appear when the file has already been updated or uploaded, excuse me. So so when the file was uploaded to the server successfully, we'll just get a message that appears to let them know that the file uploaded successfully. We're still for the user experience and we're going to use just one button, the OK button, and display an information icon.